Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here talking to you about evaluating limits algebraically. So when we are trying to find the limit as x approaches some number, the simplest option that we can use when evaluating a limit as x approaches something is to plug that real number in and evaluate. Okay, so if we look at some examples here, limit as x approaches 3 of 3x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. Think about for this fraction, what might be weird is if we had divide by 0. If you think about what you might be able to plug in to get divide by 0, you might get numbers like x equals 2 or negative 2. So the limit as x approaches is 3 is not at a funky place in the graph of this, right? This graph is going to be well behaved around 3. It's at 2 and negative 2 for x that we have to worry. So since we don't have to worry at x equals 3, we should just be able to plug and chug in this. So if I plug in 3, that's just going to give me 3 times 3 would be 9 on the top plus 1, and then on the bottom 3 squared would be 9 minus 4, and so we'll get 10 over 5 and that will just give us a limit of 2, right? So if we can plug in, we know it's safe at a particular x value because nothing weird happens on the graph at that point, and that's going to be the easiest thing for us to do. Let's look at the next one here. Limit as x approaches negative 1 of x plus 1 over x minus 6. Negative 1 makes the top of this 0, but the top being 0 is fine. It's the bottom dividing by 0 that we worry about. So the only thing that would cause a problem here might be at x equals negative 6, we would get a denominator of 0. So negative negative 1 is fine. So we will get negative 1 plus 1 on the top. We already said what that is. And then on the bottom, we'll get negative 1 plus 6. So that's going to give us 0 on the top divided by 5. And our limit for this one will be 0. Now it's possible we get some undefined value, right? Maybe we're approaching some x value that is you know, not well behaved when we look at this function. So when we can't plug in, we'll have to do some other methods. Here we're going to actually look at how factoring can help. If we try to plug in 4, the limit as x approaches 4 of x minus 4 over x squared minus 16, I get 4 minus 4 over 16 minus 16, and that's 0 over 0, and that doesn't tell us a darn thing about what this limit is. But what we might notice is that the bottom is factorable, right? So if we think about, this should be the same as the limit as x approaches 4 of x minus 4 over, if you notice this factors as a difference of squares, x plus 4 times x minus 4. Now you are good with your factoring still, right? So you can see here that x minus 4 reduces, right? So we get x minus 4 reduces, both of these become 1. And you might say, but wait, if x is 4, aren't you really canceling out zeros, and isn't that a bad thing to do? And remember the idea with the limit is not that we are actually at exactly the value 4, we are approaching the number 4. What happens at 4 is not what we care about. We care about what happens right around 4. So think about at 4.01 or 3.99, it's going to be okay to reduce these as factors. So this will actually be then the limit as x approaches 4 of just 1 over x plus 4. And the idea is what really happens if you were to graph y equals this, you would see that at x equals 4 we just have a hole. And reducing these factors will allow us to look at the limit right around that hole. So now if I attempt to plug in 4, then I would get 1 over 4 plus 4, and that will give us a limit of 1 over 8. Sometimes we get an undefined value. Factoring doesn't really help us. It's not going to apply in a case like this. I have a square root with some stuff in it, minus a number over x minus 5. No common factors here. In this case, what we'll do, we'll need to multiply by a conjugate. Okay, so if you remember what a conjugate is, that's going to be the same two terms, but it's going to be the opposite operation in between them. Okay, and we are going to focus, when we have a root like this, we are going to focus on the conjugate of whatever has the root in it. So we have the limit as x approaches 5. Let's make sure, could we plug in and get something? If I take 5 in for x, 5 plus 4 would be 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So I'd get 0 on the top, 3 minus 3. And I'd get 5 minus 5 on the bottom. So 0 over 0, that's no good, right? So this idea of multiplying by a conjugate is to look at this as two terms and multiply by its conjugate on the top and the bottom. So our conjugate here is going to be the square root of x plus 4 plus 3, right? Same terms, opposite operation in between. So I have x minus 5, 
down here. I have to multiply the bottom of the fraction by the same thing. We're really multiplying by one, right? When we multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. So here we get this, and now we'll have to do some distributing. Let's go ahead and say equal to the limit as x approaches 5. Now, when I take the root times the root, that's just going to give me x plus 4 with no root. And think about why we multiply by conjugate, right? If I multiply the outsides, I get a positive 3 times the root. When I multiply the inside terms, I get a negative 3 times the root. Those are going to add up to give me 0, right? The inner and outer terms, when I multiply by conjugate, will give me 0. Then the last times the last, negative 3 times 3, gives me minus 9 over, and I'm going to go ahead and just leave these separate on the bottom, and you'll see why in a second, I think, if you don't already. So we'll leave the x minus 5 times the quantity x plus 4 in the root plus 3. Notice what happens on the top. I have x plus 4 minus 9, and so that is actually going to give me the limit as x approaches 5 of now x minus 5 over my matching x minus 5 that I have in the bottom. Hey, isn't that magical? I think that's magical. You know what's not magical is that my fraction bar is not quite long enough down here. Okay, so if we can now reduce the factors of x minus 5, you can see that's probably what was giving us the problem at x equals 5 anyway. So both of these reduce to 1. And so now we get the limit as x approaches 5 of just 1 over this square root of x plus 4 plus 3. And now when we plug in 5 to this conjugate, it's not the same as what we started with. We're not going to get 0 there, right? So I will get 1 on the top. And then if I plug in 5, I'll get 5 plus 4. That would be 9 in the square root. Square root of 9 is 3 plus the other 3. We actually get 1 over 6 for this limit here. Our last one here is just a case where we get something undefined like 0 over 0 when we have a complex fraction, in other words, fractions in fractions. In this one, uh, we might use a method of like just getting a common denominator might help us to reduce some things. So you notice if we plug in 0 here, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x plus 4 minus a fourth all on top and then everything over x. Here if I plug in, I get 1 fourth minus a fourth on top, which is 0, and I get 0 on the bottom, so 0 over 0 is no good. But if we get a common denominator just on top, let's just worry about the top and getting a common denominator. So then that will be the limit as x approaches 0. Uh, so think about what I need to do. I need to multiply this x plus 4 into the other one and this 4 into this one, right? So this one I need to multiply 4 into this on the top and the bottom. And this one I need to multiply in x plus 4 on the top and the bottom. So that will give us the limit as x approaches 0 of my first fraction. I would have a 4 on the top, and then I would have 4 x plus 4. I'm going to go ahead and not distribute that for now. And then over here we have minus. I would have x plus 4 on the top, and then I would have a common denominator of 4 x plus 4 there. Of course, all of that is still over x, though. Now let's look at what happens on the top. So if I still have the limit as x approaches 0, uh, so think about, be careful distributing the minus here, right? So we have 4 minus x minus 4. Well, the 4 minus 4 gets rid of the 4, right? So I just have x on top over 4 times x plus 4, once I combine these into one fraction on top, all over x. And then if you think about bumping this up and multiplying by the reciprocal, you can see the x's will reduce to 1 now, right? So what we really get is the limit as x approaches 0 of, now I just have a 1 on the top, and on the bottom I just have 4 times x plus 4, and that's easy to plug into and get something that is defined, right? So we have 1 on top. If we plug in 0 here, we'll get 4 in the parentheses times the 4 on the outside. We'll get 1 over 16. Okay, so if you can plug in, it's not a weird value of x on the function. Go ahead and do that. It's the easiest way. It's the shortest path to victory. You might have to do some factoring and reduce factors, then plug in. You might have to 
multiply by a conjugate and do some reducing and then plug in. You might have to get a common denominator and then reduce and then plug in. But these are just some methods in some way that are working toward plugging in that x value and just getting the limit algebraically. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.